Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, MGJ Vlog. Um, this is my first video on my channel in this new format. So the, the topic about this video is why I gave up my Model 3. I'll say this, there was nothing wrong with the car. It is my favorite car I've ever driven. Before this, my favorite car was the Toyota Camry. I forgot what year it was, but it was a hybrid. And it was great. It really was great. Um, but then I upgraded, I personally think. Uh, it took me a while, but I upgraded to the Tesla Model 3. I got that car in San Diego. Drove it across the country from coast to coast. And the way I remember it, it took me two and a half days. I traveled like 12 hours a day. Uh, the first trip I took, I took it with my brother. And then the second and the third trip, I did it by myself. And I really had no issues. The only hiccup I had was on my third trip coming from San Diego to Florida, where I'm at right now. Um, well, I was in Colorado visiting family and when I left, there just seemed to be a, I don't know, for some reason it was a, I don't know if it was a glitch or what, but the, the GPS in the car was not working correctly and it took a few hours for it to finally uh, straighten out. Outside of that, I had no problems. No anxiety about finding a place to charge. It was a wonderful experience and one thing I gotta say, I have a great appreciation for my country, how big it is. I mean, I've flown from coast to coast and it, it, I think it takes like five hours or something like that to fly. But driving it, you really, at least I really got a great appreciation how massive our country is and it's very impressive, I think. And I'm so glad that I was born in this country. The reason I'm giving the car up is not because of anything in the car. Was, it was wrong with the car. I had uh, the only maintenance problems I had was I replaced my tires frequently. But I also drove a lot. And then I... I did have a repair I had to do on, oh, I forgot the name of the piece, but it, it's like a tie rod, I think, or something. It was off on the uh, front right passenger side, and Tesla came out to me. I didn't have to go to them. They came to me, and, uh, oh, nope, nope, that's a different issue. I'm sorry, I'm getting my stories mixed up. Uh, for those that don't have Teslas, Tesla, most of the time, they'll come to you. There are certain situations where you actually had to go to them. And the times that they have come to me was either rotate my tires or replace my tire. They came out to check my brake fluid replaced my uh, air filters within my car and I did have one issue with the f hood in the e-world they call it the frunk and that, what that issue was it on the screen it would indicate that the hood is popped up but it physically was not popped up so they came to me and they fixed that right on the spot now uh, the tie rod or the arm something, I forget what the pieces was, that I had to go to them. And the closest one for me for that was in uh, West Palm. And 
they replaced both pieces, both front pieces, and it only cost me like 200 and I think 25 bucks or something. A lot cheaper than I expected. Outside of that, very little maintenance issue. I did have somebody hit me in the back of the car. Ironically, a Toyota Camry. Eh, go figure. It was a freak accident. He hit me from behind. Um, and they, one of the great things, if, again, if you don't have Teslas, you don't know this, they record everything. Video-wise, they re I mean, everything they record. And so I had the footage of the accident. Now, in Florida, it's a no-fault state. The way the cop explained it to me is that the cops are not the ones to determine who's at fault. They leave that up to the insurance companies to decide. Okay. Well, I had video. So, but the guy that he, that hit me, he initial, he's the one that called the police first and both of our stories, you know, the cops talked to us separately and both of our stories were the same. He, he acknowledged that it was, you know, it was just a really freak accident. And what the freak accident was, is there was debris on the road and we're on a, not on a main road, but kind of like a side road. And I swerve, I wasn't going fast. I was not even going above the speed limit, actually, because there was a decent amount of traffic on the road anyways. But um, coming up to the debris, and I swerved, moved around it, and I looked down to see what the debris was, you know, to so make sure I wasn't hitting it. And then when I looked up, the cars in front of me had stopped suddenly. Well, then I stopped it suddenly. And then apparently the car determined that the amount of pressure I was putting on the brake was not good enough. The brakes, I could feel the brake drop below my feet. And I stopped and I, I was not even close to the uh, vehicle in front of me. I mean, there was a good, at least a couple of feet, I would say, or more between me and the car. Well, the guy behind me, he did identical to what I did, but unfortunately for him, he, he realized that he was not going to be able to stop in time without hitting me. So he was trying to swerve around me, pull off to the side of the road, pull off the road basically. But unfortunately he caught the right back corner of my car and it, in reality, it, it seemed like it did more damage to his car than mine. But either way, insurance covered it. I, I had sent the footage of the accident to the insurance company. They acknowledged it was their fault, or well, you know, that they would pay for it. I remember the cop asked me, was I on autopilot? And no, I was not. Um, autopilot is great. It's not perfect, and I find that it works really good on the highway, but not so much on the side roads as of right now. Um, but maybe eventually it will get really good. So, uh, yeah, that was the only big uh, maintenance problems that I ever ha I really had. Um, they're wonderful cars. They really are wonderful cars. And I saved a lot of money on fuel. Uh, I was doing a, a I, I was like a ride service kind of person for a while. And uh, so I, I, I saved money on doing that. The reason for as much as I love the car and everything, Oh, yeah, the one the other thing I want to do what I do want to say is yes, the cars are expensive up front. I'm not denying that. But I think either you break even or you actually uh get ahead of costs in the long run because of the low cost of maintenance. It's very 
at least in my experience, it's very rare that things are going uh, that need to be replaced on these cars. Uh, at least for me. And uh, I put about over 100,000 miles on the car in three years. The reason I'm all giving it up is because I am moving out of the country. And it was made no sense for me to keep the car since I wouldn't be able to use it. So I left the car in the care of my brother to take care of. He already has two Teslas in himself. So he's basically gonna be babysitting that one. I'm moving to the Philippines. And that's what mostly you're gonna see on my videos on this channel will be my experience in the Philippines and traveling to other countries in Asia. I, uh, I have some really nice plans in the uh, coming months to uh, adventures to explore and have you guys come along with me to experience it. And hopefully you guys will. And if not, Okie dokie. I'm still going to make those trips anyways. Anyways, uh, so that's just what I want to explain uh, why I've given up the car. It's not because anything was wrong with the car. If I were to buy another car, it would be a Tesla. It would definitely be a Tesla. Uh, that would be my preferred car to buy if it is available. Unfortunately, it's not available in the Philippines as of right now. I do know that they're, they're starting to produce electric cars there. And uh, I don't know how reliable they are. From my experience, Tesla makes the best EVs. But this is just my opinion. There may be others out there that disagree. So, anywho, I just wanted to let you guys know uh, why I gave up my Model 3. It was a sad goodbye, but it had to be done. All right, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself and the ones you love. Bye-bye.